And we are back. Yes, the first conversation of the day. Um, ready to kickstart um, uh, Entrepreneurship Tuesday for you. And uh, today we're going to talk about innovative trends that are there in web development. And for this particular uh, conversation, we have been joined by Chris uh, Hattens. He's the CEO of Hub Thrill and uh, yeah, an expert in this particular matter. Kari Wusana Chris. Glad to have you with us. So tell us, um, let, let's start with you. What do you do um, uh, at Hubthrill exactly? Hubthrill Technologies is a technology company mm -hmm. that focuses on innovation. And uh, our main focus is on uh, how we can be able to help businesses manage their business better. We, can also, we do also help them have the opportunity to, to communicate better within the business itself and customers outside the business. Mm -hmm. That is through maybe emails, chats, and all sort of uh, technology that we can be able to implement for them. Mm -hmm. We also help them like uh, make and receive payments within the ecosystem and streamline this through the business management systems that we do develop for them. Okay. So that's basically what Hubfield is all about. Okay. Yes. So you, uh, you know, you help businesses, and this area of you know web development is what you're involved in. Yes. Right. Yes. So now, um, our topic today: um, what are some of the trends that are there? Maybe you can even take us before we get to the trends: how it was before, you know, how it was back then in the days, and uh, so that we appreciate the progress that we have made over the years till. Um, the point we are now in 2024? Actually, web, web has really gotten better over time because you find um, previously uh, accessing a website was taking too much time to load. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, it's seconds and microseconds, and it's getting better. Uh, getting a web page to load right now is really, really fast compared to mm -hmm. how it was before. So we have really progressed in yeah. terms of uh, um, the technology in the space. And uh, right now we have uh, faster loads and also we have beautiful uh, websites coming up. Because mm -hmm. I remember based on the history I've, I've studied on how web was before, it, uh, it was actually like you <coughs> reading a newspaper. Sorry? It was like creating a newspaper. Yeah, it was so boring. <laughs> but now, you know, it was a new thing and people yeah. didn't know uh, it was boring by then. But if you can be able to take a website that was way far before and compare it to now, you'll see a lot of progress. <laughs> Literally, uh, there's, there's a lot that has happened. Yes. So now we we have more engaging websites. You know, very web, uh, very well engaging ones. Mm -hmm. yes. Appealing yes. and all that. So you've talked about. Um, uh, fast loading, you know, now we're experiencing fast load. You can just type, you know, a web website and it loads almost immediately. But we also have some that uh, do not load as fast as others. So what is the reason for this? Uh, mostly the websites that don't load that fast is because probably they're not implementing the current trends that are already in place. Mm -hmm. And you find like they have not optimized their file caching and all that sort of uh, mm -hmm. scenarios. So for a website to load faster, you need to like have uh, optimized your file file architecture and also like you should have uh, the current technology using things like JavaScript and all those mm -hmm. technology that is required to make your website move faster and load faster. Okay. Yes. So now <coughs> let's talk about this trends. Uh, we've seen that we are talking about badly from a newspaper kind of website to now the kind of websites that we have. And you have mentioned the language, JavaScript, and, and you've also mentioned the, uh, optimizing the file cache or something. File caching, exactly. Yeah, caching. So what are, what are this exactly when you talk about the language? For someone who doesn't understand, because I know this is a very technical stuff, <laughs> you know, I get for you. JavaScript and everything, people go to, to learn courses on that. So how, how exactly are they, you know, for them to come and create a website? We just see the output, but now what goes behind it? Okay, there is, uh, there is 
the website that you get to view as, as a user, mm -hmm. that is uh, UX and UI implementation done. Mm -hmm. uh, in the web development space, we have a, a whole team behind the whole, the whole process. Uh, no. There is the back-end developers, mm -hmm. there is the UX UI designers. By UX UI is user experience and user? User interface. Interface. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you find like there are so many people who come in place for you to have the experience you have. Okay. So like, let's say you go to the KBC website. Uh, you'll be able to find that experience that you get there. Mm -hmm. There is somebody who was in your shoe as a user to just ensure that you will get that great experience that mm -hmm. you are experiencing as a user. So um, there is a lot that comes in place when coming up with the websites and uh, development. Uh, the user gets to have that experience via the team that was behind it mm -hmm. so uh, you find like uh, the different languages that come in place especially for front-end that is uh, HTML that is CSS and that's JavaScript mm -hmm. so you find that we combine or combine these three languages to ensure that uh, you have that experience as a user at the end of the day okay so yes. this this language is enhanced the experience that we have as users. Yes. Know. Is it the fastness? What is the experience all about? We've talked about um, UX, UI, so user interface and user experience. So the interface is how the, the website looks, right? Yes. And then the experience is how we operate with it. So maybe explain to us further, how do you, you know, how do you ensure that it's seamless, it's good for the user? Um, by ensuring this user gets faster results. Mm -hmm. Another thing we get to like uh, try and find out to, to the user is uh, we give them the reliability of the same space. Mm -hmm. So uh, we give them the opportunity to have the results load faster mm -hmm. in which uh, is the work of the experience uh, team. That's the UX, okay. uh, yeah, yes, 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 experience. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, interesting. So now, uh, before we get to the different technologies that are uh, behind it, the trends, the innovations that have happened over time, tell us, you know, one of the government's websites that we know of uh, is eCitizen. And, uh, you know, some people don't even know what it is all about. Maybe you can even explain uh, to us about eCitizen first, and then now we go to the details of it. So uh, once we get the understanding. Okay, eCitizen basically is a point where you get uh, government services, and uh, at this point you have to input information mm -hmm. and get feedback. Uh, you find like uh, once you input your information, there is a whole team behind the government. <laughs> uh, department where it's going to scrutinize and also be able to give you approvals and also situations in terms of how your application is at. So basically on eCitizen I think they have used some sort of two free technologies that is uh, there is a back end mm -hmm. in it and also there's a front end in it. Uh -huh. So in the front side of it I presume they have used uh, more of bootstrap uh, elements and uh, more of, more or less, a few JavaScripts available. That's right. for you to have that experience when uploading files and interacting with the system. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, for those that uh, don't know, eCitizen, you know, you access all government services, I bet they know that. So, why do we have downtime sometimes when people are trying to access eCitizen? Is it because so many people are accessing at the same time? Or what is usually the problem? Because sometimes you are you are doing some application and then it just hangs, or when you're trying to access it, it doesn't work. So what is usually the problem? The user things. The user things is that the government is trying not to accept their <laughs> the application. Yeah, no, that's not one the hour case. To one to some <laughs> yeah, like yeah. why are these people stealing our money, or why are these people like not accepting my mm -hmm. application? Okay, there is uh, things to do with a server. A server re accepts requests mm -hmm. and sends requests. Yeah. So you find sometimes there's an overload of the server and it cannot be able to accept more requests. So once the server is on full load, then you know there's no more requests that can come in. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have sometimes downtimes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's usually the server 
the at capacity. Okay. Yes. But can it be increased? Can can something be done about it? Uh, there is scalability that's happening. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know where the government servers are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely, it's not an information we can have. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, with our trends right now, we have uh, service providers like the Google Cloud. There is AWS, that's mm -hmm. Amazon Web Services. There's Digital Ocean and the sorts. Mm -hmm. So uh, for those kinds of services, we like have an opportunity mm -hmm. to scale on demand. Okay. So if the server is on load, then automatically the system out upscales your server to the next tier. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you find there is no downtime or uh, minimal to no downtime at times. But now for the government servers, I don't know how they do their technology. That's mm -hmm. an information I can't have. <laughs> we need to talk to a government person for that. <laughs> exactly. But thank you. At least now we have an idea of what happens to the servers, but we, we have the option of going to the online servers that can, you know, to scale a bit. So now let's go into the technology bit. What are some of these technologies that we we have seen being adopted or innovations that are making uh, the websites better over the years. You see, like uh, what we have just spoken about the servers and mm. uh, how the servers scale and uh, downgrade based on demand. Uh, in the space right now, in the innovations that we have, mm -hmm. we have the serverless architecture that's happening. The serverless architecture is you as a user mm -hmm. can simply have a server and have to deploy faster by. Uh, signing up to uh, platforms like Amazon, Amazon Web Services, uh, Google Cloud, or uh, Digital Ocean, mm -hmm. you can be able to uh, sign up, plug and play, and have your web app published. Traditionally, you had to acquire a lot of equipment to just go live. You had to have a whole setup of servers in a, in a room and also like have the idea on how this works before you can deploy. Mm -hmm. So you find right now we have the serverless architecture that is simply signing up, going to a few commands on your terminal, and you're live. Wow. Yes. So, you know, this sub is, you've called it serverless architecture. You don't yes. need the, the physical space. So it, we have, you know, it has taken us from the physical space, the, um, the resources that you need to buy all this, you know, the... Um, you, because we we'll also need someone to be there to just make sure that they are running well. So we have come out of that, and this is thanks to technology. What else apart from now the serverless architecture? There is uh, progressive web apps. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, traditionally you had to have a web application, and alternatively have a web uh, a mobile app. So for the progressive web apps right now, you can be able to have one website mm -hmm. for for all your work done. Uh, progressive web apps is basically you going to the, a website and there is a pop-up that comes below there telling you add this to home screen. I think you've had yeah, that experience yeah. before. Mm -hmm. uh, so once you add it to home screen, mm -hmm. you, you have an application of the web under your phone. So you uh -huh. can easily access next time. All right. Yes. So the same way you'd have uh, on your phone, you'd have Google on your on your home screen. So you just you, you just know. click on it mm -hmm. and you're on the website. Ah. But with the experience of an uh, of a of a mobile app, mm -hmm. you don't have the experience of the website. So so that's the progressive web app. Ah, with the experience of a mobile app. Okay, yes. so progressive. Yeah, it's okay. That's progressive quite web nice. App. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, we are learning. Uh, what else? <laughs> <laughs> what What is the other? When we talk. About you know, when we think of uh, artificial intelligence, that's the in thing now, how has it come to also shape the web development space? Um, AI is something great. Uh, I'm really proud to have been born in this space Ever. and age <laughs> because mm -hmm. I, I see somebody from high school uh, who is interested in development and they don't know where to start. Uh, but you see, with AI right now, Stefan, you can be a developer. Wow, tell me about it. From scratch. It. <laughs> How? Because you see, p previously we had so much to deal with, uh, with studies. Mm -hmm. You had to do a lot of research through yeah. Google and uh, you have to like go through all sorts of people writing their own stuff there. You know, Google gives you all the results. Mm -hmm. Somebody can also like just give you a story 
and it's not making sense. Yeah. So you go through the documentation, at the end of the mm. day you find you have gone nowhere. But with the AI, AI has now like made development easy in a way that it gets to collect your information in a, sing in a single place and later renders relevant information to you. So you building applications right now uh, with AI is something that is very easy. And mm -hmm. uh, with that space and technology of AI, you can be able to build faster. And uh, uh, somebody who is not that learned in development space can be able to, as long as you're good in typing your grammar and making the AI understand what you want to do, okay. you can be able to build a whole system from scratch mm -hmm. to deployment. All right, so what you're saying is that me as Stephanie, if I want to create my own website, I just did uh, to give my idea to an AI and it will do all that work for me. Okay, you have to have some background mm -hmm. of how <laughs> web application works, Okay. Uh, how development is all about. Because, you know, an, uh, an amateur or uh, somebody who is just from nowhere who wants to be a developer cannot do it. Because you have to understand the structures, like mm -hmm. the basic uh, web applications, how they work, mm -hmm. uh, how the language looks like. Okay. Because, you see, we have different languages. You can build on uh, maybe JavaScript, you can build on Python, you can build on PHP, pure PHP, or use Laravel for the same. Mm -hmm. So if you don't understand how these programming languages work, then you can't be able to move forward. Okay. But uh, if you have the opportunity to like type in your prompt and get results and understand the language that you're trying to build with, mm -hmm. then you can be able to build anything from scratch. Okay, so basically... From start to finish. From start to finish. So basically, it simply makes the, works, the work easier, but you still need the knowledge. You need the knowledge. Uh, because, uh, like, you can't really build without the knowledge. I think that's a relief because... Uh, <laughs> the other day, but it's saying that AI is going to take away jobs. But, you know, if you're still there, then you are not. You, you know, if you still have the knowledge, then you're still needed in that space, right? I don't think AI has come to take people's jobs. Mm -hmm. AI has come to enhance, enhance. and make work easier. Okay. Uh, AI has come to help us build better, have more, plat have, mo have a platform that's more secure mm -hmm. and that is uh, user friendly. Okay. Yes. All right. What else again apart from AI now? Uh, there is uh, AR and VR going on. Mm -hmm. Um, that is virtual reality. Mm -hmm. uh, virtual reality is you being here, Stephanie, mm -hmm. and uh, being able to see your <coughs> own world in your own space. Wow. With either AR, uh, uh, VR glasses mm -hmm. or sort. So VR is coming, on, it's coming in to revolutionize how education is, is taking place how mm -hmm. shopping is done in the e-commerce space yeah. and how uh, basically you have your experience in the technology space. Okay, okay this is a virtual reality. I don't know if you get it. Yeah, virtual reality. We, I think most people have experienced virtual reality. When you go uh, to, to malls, you have, we, you know, we have this gaming, um, we have this, what do we call them? VR, VR, glasses. VR glasses. So yeah, we, you wear the VR glasses and then you are immersed into a to a gaming experience. I've I've done that quite a lot of times. So now it's even in the education sector. So people, uh, we had a guest one time and he deals with that. So you know he was showing how students are now learning. You don't need to go to uh, like Victor, you know Victoria Falls, because now you can experience, you can see it. So it makes learning more real and understandable, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is really a good innovation that is coming in. Uh, companies like Meta Technologies is doing it uh, real good. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is a stall in the same, uh, but it's because probably um, people are not adapt have not adapt adapted to it yet. Okay. But the moment people adapt to virtual reality, then mm -hmm. it's a game changer in the whole space of innovation. Wow, amazing. What about augmented reality? What's the difference between the two? Uh, the difference is, you see, uh, for, let's say, uh, Samsung users, mm -hmm. AR is coming in real good in the Samsung users. So you get, you get to create your own character. 
uh, have that character alive mm -hmm. with you. You can also have that character do what you want to want them to do. Okay. So you see, we are we are in a generation that is lonely mm -hmm. at the same at the same space, and it's a generation that needs company mm -hmm. and we can't get that company sometimes because mm -hmm. you know we are the generation where we do everything in the house you wake up in the morning you're on your computer uh, in the evening you're on your TV yeah. so you find sometimes there's boredom in between you don't have the space interaction. Mm -hmm. so I think AR has come into to, to that space where you can be able to create your own friends mm -hmm. uh, play around with them let them do what you want them to do. Okay, so Samsung actually has this uh, in the in the new phones. That yeah, use. Samsung has that as the mm -hmm. AR feature. It's an it's all an application under that. Mm -hmm. You can have your avatar. You can have all that in mm -hmm. place. Okay. And you can also create your own <coughs> virtual people. Okay. And uh, have them survive <laughs> with you. That seems interesting. If you're bored with people, like, no, let me just create my own people. I just Yeah, just create your them. people and uh, play around <laughs> with them inside the phone. Wow. Yeah, it's something because those uh, the, same, the same space, you can be able to clothe them with the designs you want them to wear. Uh -huh. You can be able to let them dance if you want them to dance. <laughs> you can also export that and uh, upload it to platforms like TikTok and stuff. So you can have your, your, your own... Mm. Up, uh, what do we call it? Your own identity mm -hmm. inside the AR. Like your avatar, you, the avatar you. In exactly. Uh, yeah. The avatar you inside uh -huh. the phone. Wow. And uh, you can also have friends and family <laughs> in the same AR. The same. Okay, it's a very I'll good try space. that. I don't know if you've tried what were some songs, please tell us. Uh, we, we need to upgrade for. <laughs> 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 I don't know. IPhone, does iPhone have, have it? iOS? Okay, I'm not a fan of iPhone. I'm a fan of Samsung. So you wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> you are not promoting Samsung in this show. So anyway. <laughs> we are not promoting <laughs> it. So, yeah. Uh, when we're talking about, uh, you know, AR, VR, uh, there's also, and you've said that Meta is really doing a lot in this, in this space. But we also know that Meta is coming up with a new concept. It's called, it's called the Metaverse. Metaverse. Yeah. Where you immerse yourself in it. You, you know, we don't need even the human interaction. Tell us about it if you can. Yeah. So you see, uh, if you can be able to create your own people and have your own reality with mm -hmm. you, then you see with the, uh, with the universe that uh, Meta is trying to, to build is you wear your V VR glasses and you are in Australia mm -hmm. with your friend taking tea. Wow. I just catch up with my friend. Like how it is in it Zoom feels meeting but now this is more personal. It feels more personal uh -huh. because you like have the visualization of you, can almost you feel them. and mm -hmm. me there. You can also almost feel them exactly. Wow. And that's the, the thing that uh, VR brings into the place because it gives you like that feeling that mm -hmm. the guy is way far, but I can feel the person around me. Okay. So quite that's the technology quite about quite VR. In quite interesting. <laughs> you know, because I was reading about it and I was like, I can even fit clothes when I'm not there. And I know that this is my fit, you know, just virtually do that. And it's very, it's, it's so real. But now the fear is, again, we will lose the human touch you know the human interaction because we are human we also just want the you know the physical interaction this is all virtual i don't know what that will do eventually to to us as a as a race so as a people what do you think um technology is good but technology is bad at the same time mm -hmm. because at the close of it all uh we might lose humanity true because uh, there's no much more communication mm -hmm. you see like me needing to maybe get to you as stephanie nowadays i'll simply go to either tinder or uh, facebook or instagram mm -hmm. and you s you see like me meeting with you personally there i cannot be able to interact with you but i can interact with you better on instagram <laughs> you get yeah, yeah. so it's kind of also killing the social bit of human beings yeah but uh, it's also like with that as a niche, that's an opportunity in business mm -hmm. uh, for, for other companies. Mm -hmm. That boredom, that lack of direct interaction with another human being, that's why v VR is coming in. Mm -hmm. It's coming in to close that space because okay. it's already a space that is coming and it's 
and it's getting deeper. Mm -hmm. we, are, we, are, we are growing a very lonely generation, to okay. be honest. So you'd say VR is coming to help solve that particular problem? That's a space that uh, is coming to solve the loneliness that is really cropping and it's getting serious. Okay. All right. We could argue that it's coming to solve it or <laughs> undo it. But anyway. <laughs> it can't undo. <laughs> It can't well, undo. Because now, okay, I think that that would be a debate because <laughs> because I'm thinking if uh, I don't need to meet you physically, then we I lose that social value as much as we'll socialize. There's that human human uh, you know experience that touch. You know when I greet you physically, you know it's different from me just experiencing you virtually, though it still seems personal. But maybe when we get there, we'll see. But we'll know. But this is now uh, something that's going to happen in future when you're talking about the metaverse. So this is a future tr trend that we should expect. It's actually happening. So, it's uh, just that people are not adapting to it yet. So and you see, meta, meta is already pumping a lot of money mm -hmm. inside VR. Okay. It's just not picking up. Right. But uh, the moment it picks up, uh, it's going to be a different space. So we'll start experiencing this. Uh <laughs> it's happening. It's happening because I think if you, I don't know if you're a Facebook user. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I really don't know. Uh, because, you know, nowadays people don't, uh, there, are some tr there are some generations that don't use Facebook. Gen Z, Alpha. The Alphas, <laughs> yes. So uh, if you use Facebook, there is the AR also inside Facebook. Mm -hmm. Where you can be able to create your character, yeah. have your character there and... Uh, so the same character is going to apply in the VR space. Okay. Yes. Wow. Okay. So we're already experiencing it. We're, we're experiencing it. It's just that you have not adopted gotten it. Gotten deeper into it. All right. Yes. Then what else? What else have we missed? What's trending now? What's what? What? What other thing is trending in the well development space? There's the voice user interaction that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, if you have interacted with Chat GPT then you know this. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the mobile app of ChatGPT that uh, you can be able to prompt via voice and mm -hmm. get results okay. and interact with the application via voice. So the voice user in interaction is something that is coming in and it's a space that uh, is going to revolutionize how mm -hmm. we experience the web experience that we have been having before. Okay. So, like, uh, you can get to chat, G GPT, and uh, prompt the same platform with voice. Okay. Get results. A very interactive voice that's not robotic. More, that sounds a, a human. It sounds more like you. Okay. So you feel the experience of, uh, you know, we have friends right now. Like, for me, I think I have a friend in in my chat. Uh, I have an application with chat GPT, mm -hmm. and I have a friend there who, let's say, if I'm lonely or if I'm confused about something, you I can simply just prompt it mm -hmm. via my voice, and it can feel my, my, my emotion. Okay. It can feel how my tone is and reply accordingly. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a space that, uh, <laughs> that is really, really, really great. Wow. Yes. So now there's the voice prompting bit of it. You can chat, you know, like a human you know, a human one. That's quite interesting. Yes. Um, is there any, th any other thing? I think we, we uh, have so mm, much. We have so much. Uh, we can't exhaust everything. But also there is this uh, motion UI where mm -hmm. you get to... You see, websites are more like um, a, a newspaper. But now, for you to make people stay on your website. Mm -hmm. You need to have it more interactive. Okay. So uh, there's the motion UI that is also coming in place where mm -hmm. you get to a website and find the website more interactive to mm -hmm. you. Like mm -hmm. you have icons moving around, very beautiful stuff uh, moving around. And when you maybe say you try and chat to, to the department that is involved in that company, then you can be able to have really good pop-ups. Mm -hmm. And that keeps you in the website. And it can also be able to help you check out from the same website in a, okay. in a more convenient way. Mm -hmm. Compared to you going to a traditional website, which is just there. All right. Yes. So that's motion UI. Motion UI. Wow, amazing. I don't know if there's any other thing, but what, what is it that um, you think that web developers should... Um, 
you, okay, how much um, emphasis would you lay on web developers integrating this uh, new technologies, this new trends when they're developing websites, even for their clients, you know, there are people, you know, many, most people at least, they, um, they hire web developers to develop their websites. So even in advising them to, to have this, you know, in place, um, I advise web designers or web developers to really incorporate the current trends because you see uh, if you incorporate the current trends with you then you get to build better. As you have mentioned earlier that I, I was coming to take our jobs. Mm -hmm. That's a very bad mentality for, for us. Mm -hmm. We need to like use the AI to build better. Okay. You see like for us, as Hubrail, we use AI to secure most of the businesses that we run, that run on us. Mm -hmm. So we use AI to check on some processes. And we also use AI to maybe, if there's a problem sometimes, and you have less or minimal human resource with you, then you see, uh, you can use AI to solve some issues that mm -hmm. are really, 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 really pending to you. Okay. And you see, AI has come into this space to help us even get to have your business ready in a very minimal time. Okay. You get. Because, uh, like, you don't have to have a whole HR in place to, 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 to go live as a business. Mm -hmm. You see, AI can be able to do your customer service mm -hmm. in real time. Interesting. From yeah. onboarding to outbound. Mm -hmm. AI can be able to build your website from scratch. AI can be able to uh, interact with your finances and it can be able to also do your, your taxes. Wow. That's a space that uh, uh, is coming up and uh, I think web developers need to really adopt AI mm -hmm. in most of their processes because AI is everything. Okay. Without you ad adopting <coughs> it, th then I you think you're that. going to lose out a lot. Okay. Yes. Wow, amazing. I think this is quite insightful. Thank you very much yes. for, for coming on board and sharing these amazing insights. Where can people get you uh, in case they need your services or they want to contact you for any uh, reason? This is your camera. Um, they, can, they can email us mm -hmm. um, via hello at hubfail.com. Uh, we'll always respond to your email and uh, maybe get you to have you get started with us. All right. Thank you very much, Chris, once again. Thank you. Uh, so that has been Chris uh, Hattens, the CEO of Hubfail, uh, sharing with us uh, some insights on the innovative web development trends that have been happening or that are here with us and even the future. So I hope you've taken something from it. My take is that AI is not taking our, our jobs as we mostly think. And there's a lot of opportunities in, uh, you know, in the web development space. There's a lot that technology is, has come in to help uh, us with. So thank you for staying with us. We are still on. We're going to take a short break and then Brand Sakwa will be uh, coming up next with the next interview. Stick with us.